Sony will be announcing the Sony A93 on November the 8th, 2023. But according to Sony Alpha rumors, that date isn't so certain anymore. Instead, we may not see the camera until January. So what about the specs? Any more validation there? Is the A93 shaping up to be a strong competitor to the Canon EOS R5 and the Nikon Z8? Stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, subscribe to stay up to date on the latest camera news. And for all the minor news stories, all those news stories not quite big enough to have their own separate video, follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter. According to Sony Alpha rumors, the Sony A93 was supposed to be announced at the Sony Creative Space 2023 on November the 7th or November the 8th, along with a 300 mm prime. However, Sony Alpha Rumors recently stated that the A93 may be announced as late as January of 2024. So what do we really know about the Sony A93? Do we know the price? Do we know the date? Do we even have any sort of validated specifications? Or are these leaked specifications instead of actually leaked specifications? Someone's forecast. And I'm, I'm getting the sense that these are forecasted specs. Now, if the camera is supposed to cost around $4,500, and that's pretty much in keeping with what we see in the previous version. So $4,500 doesn't seem all that extreme. However, the marketplace has changed since the A92 came out. We have the Canon EOS R5 for $3,900 and the Nikon Z8 for just under $4,000. So the big question is, all these forecasted or leaked specifications for the Sony A93, are they better than either of those two cameras in any way? Before we answer that question, let's take a look at the latest leaked specs from the Camera Insider. While the resolution for the Sony A93 has definitely varied, from a low of around 26 megapixels to a high of around 36 megapixels, coming from sources like Sony Alpha Rumors, Photo Rumors, and even the new camera. Then we have Digital Camera World and many others repeating what they're stating. The Camera Insider says that it's going to be around 33 megapixels, that it's going to be a stacked full-frame sensor, and being a stacked full-frame sensor is kind of what we expect here in 2023. But if we take a look at the competition, the Canon EOS R5, which was announced back and released back in 2020, the middle of 2020, and the Nikon Z8, which was just recently announced, both of those two cameras have 45 megapixels, and the Nikon Z8, well, it does have a stack sensor as well, although the Canon EOS R5 doesn't. The R5 Mark II is expected to get a stacked sensor. So 45 megapixels, considerably higher than what the A93 is supposed to get, yet the A93 is supposed to be anywhere from five to $600 more than the Nikon Z8 and the Canon EOS R5. So when it comes to the sensor in this case, it looks like the Nikon Z8 definitely has the future A93 beat. Now, in terms of continuous still shooting, this is where we see some definite performance gains over the Nikon Z8 and the Canon EOS R5. Are you ready for this? According to the Camera Insider, the Sony A93 is forecast to deliver 40 frames per second. That's not JPEG, that's 12-bit RAW. It doesn't say lossless RAW, but let's go ahead and assume that it is. And in 14-bit RAW, 30 frames per second. And that definitely has the Canon EOS R5 and the Nikon Z8 beat. Then again, we have very little information about those two modes. But the one thing I want to kind of focus on for a little bit here, the Sony A93, all Sony cameras, they do use CF Express Type A cards. And that means you're going to have, well, you're going to cap out at around 650 megabytes per second. That's sustained right. Now, Type B cards offer twice the speed. And yes, I know what you're thinking. What if these are Gen 4 Type A cards? But if we take a look at the marketplace, there's only one single company that's currently selling a Gen 4 CF Express card, and it's a Type B, giving us somewhere around 3,000 megabytes per second sustained write speed. That's pretty fast. However, if Sony does give us Type A, and the bus speed within the camera can handle that, and somebody does release a Type A Gen 4, then we will get Gen 3 speeds of CF Express Type B. But what could really boost this camera and allow it to be the fastest camera on the marketplace, the fastest mirrorless camera, is a Type B card because you can have a really fast sensor, you can have a really fast image processor, you can have a super fast bus and everything in between, double layered stacked sensors, triple layered, double layered, doesn't matter. If your storage is limited to around 650 megabytes per second, the only way you're going to get 40 frames per second raw is, well, 
through a severely compressed Kodak. And at that point, it's not really raw, it's not even lossless. So I'm really curious to know what this camera is capable in terms of speed. The fastest Sony camera ever? I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble believing in these specifications because there's so many holes, there's so little detail that as somebody who loves camera, who's, who's excited about cameras, who's looking for the Sony, looking forward to the Sony a7S IV, I'm not all that excited about these specifications. And let's take a look at the video specifications now. We don't know anything about dynamic range. We don't know anything about the ISO, whether it's going to have dual native ISO. We don't know anything about focus stacking capabilities, but we do know a little bit about video. Now the Canon EOS R5 and the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z9 and about five other cameras can shoot 8K video for this price point and for about half this price point. The Sony A93 can't do 8K video and as far as, well, 4K video, it does 4K up to 60 frames per second. So pretty good for 2020 and pretty awesome for 2018. But here in 2023, at this price point, being able to do 4K up to 60 frames per second, um, it doesn't impress me much. Now in terms of 1080, 1920 by 1080, yes, we can go all the way up to 120 frames per second. But at $4,500, I really do expect 120 frames per second in 4K. And I expect full sensor readout. The Nikon Z8 can do it, the Canon EOS R5 can do it, and again, these cameras cost five to six hundred dollars less. What we need are validated specs on the sensor, ISO range, dynamic range, whether it has dual native ISO, what the specs are for dual native ISO, how does this camera produce better photos than the R5 or the Z8, how does it improve our workflow, but most importantly, how does it increase the probability that I'll get the shot every time. Unfortunately, all the leaked specifications that we currently have for the Sony A93 aren't validated. And even what Sony Alpha Rumors has put out on this, they're saying, well, these are wild rumors in terms of specifications. Um, they haven't been able to validate this as well. When Sony Alpha Rumors comes out and says, hey, these have been validated, these have been triple validated, these are coming from trusted sources, you can believe them. They've got a really good track record with the A7C2, the A7CR, the, what was it last year, the A7R5, um, the FX cameras, uh, Sony Alpha Rumors has been doing a terrific job. But here, these, um, we don't have a lot of details. Uh, so even if these are accurate from what Sony Alpha Rumors is saying and what the Camera Insider is saying, they don't give us enough pieces to put the puzzle piece together to understand how this camera is better than either the Nikon Z8, the Canon EOS R5, or any other camera on the marketplace, or how it is the fastest camera. Is it faster at moving information? to the storage? Is it faster at shooting stills? Is it faster at autofocus? We, we just don't know. I would consider these to be conjecture at this point. And that's the sad thing about these specifications. I think of them more as a forecast. And that's why I haven't done a video on the Sony A93 in a long time, because every single post that I see come out is either wild rumors or it's an update on existing rumors that are questionable to begin with. I really wished we could have something a little bit more specific. And if we are getting it on November the 8th, then I would expect Sony Alpha Rumors or the Camera Insider to come out with something that's coming from trusted and validated sources. And we're not seeing that. So maybe it isn't going to be coming out on November the 8th. Maybe it's not going to be coming out in November. Maybe it's going to be announced in the second week of January. We just don't know. So if you want to stay current on the Sony A93 or even the Sony a7S IV, which Sony Alpha Rumor is saying we might get this year, then go ahead and follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, and subscribe to this channel. So that way, as soon as I find anything out, if it's a big story, I'll publish a video right away. And if it's not so big, I'll go ahead and tweet it out. Um, and I only have one ask. If you're looking at purchasing camera gear, whether it be camera bodies, lenses, or accessories, uh, November is a really, really big month. We're going to start to see Retailers are just going to be pushing, they're going to be pushing incredible sales. We're going to see a lot of incredible sales this year because what we're seeing is sales are slowing down, markets are slowing down. So what companies like to do is get out and offer really big discounts. So um, if you're looking at purchase and purchasing anything camera related on Amazon.com, Adorama or b &H, then please consider using my affiliate links down below because honestly, it really does help this channel grow. Uh, thanks to everybody who helped me with pre-orders yesterday because now I'm going to go out and purchase the Canon EOS RF 200 to 800 millimeter f6.3 to 9 image stabilized USM lens. 
I just love shooting at 800 millimeters. It's something I've done with a couple of lenses now, and I really do hope that Sigma does announce something for the E-mount, the Z-mount, and other cameras that gives us something a little bit past 600 millimeters. I really do love that 150 to 600 millimeter or the 60 to 600 millimeters, but there's something magical that happens once you get up to 800 millimeters. So Sigma, are you working on anything that gives us something from let's say 100 or 200 or 300 millimeters, millimeters to 800 millimeters? I certainly hope so. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great weekend and we'll see you again soon. Don't forget, we are having major announcements happening at the Sony Creative Space 2023. These announcements are supposed to take place on November the 7th and November the 8th. It is, there is a big question though, whether we're gonna get the A9 III announced on November the 8th. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.